So I realize you haven't had time to get through all the homework on the commission and, and markups and markdowns and discounts and stuff. But I do want to take a look now to talk about interest. And we're going to start out with simple interest. And simple interest is just that. It is the simplest way to calculate interest on something. Simple interest. Interest is only calculated when one of two things happen. The end of the term. In other words, it's done. Or there's an action. Either money's drawn out or money's paid in. So if you have a savings account that's simple interest, the only time they'll ever calculate interest is when you add money to it or take money out of it. Then they'll calculate the interest and put it in before they change the balance. Or if it has a certain term, at the end of that term, they'll figure out the interest. So let's take a look at this. Simple interest has two formulas that are involved. One is the amount of interest, which is I, is equal to P, the principal, times R, which is the rate, <coughs> times the time. Now the principal is your starting amount. The rate is your percent as a decimal. And your time is always in years. So let's say you invest $4,000 at 6%. Three years. The amount of interest you earn I, is going to be what's your principal going to be? Four thousand initial investment. What's your rate going to be? Okay, six percent becomes point zero six. Let's put it into a decimal. And your time is three. Seven hundred twenty dollars in interest. Correct. So that's how you find the interest. The next thing, the next big formula, is maturity value. That's your ending value, in other words. It's your ending value, ending balance, we'll call it, is equal to your principal plus your interest. So back over here, if you want to know how much you're going to have at the end, your ending balance. So it's going to be the original 4,000 plus the 720 in interest. So $4,720. Now the example I just did is not very realistic. They usually will not use simple interest and let something sit there for three years. Normally simple interest is used on something that's going to be shorter term. Like for example, you might borrow $7,000 at 8% simple interest for three months. Um, I used to run a construction company, and this was not uncommon for me to have to do this every now and then. I mean, be in the middle of a job, a big job, and you haven't finished the job, so you haven't got paid from a customer yet, but it's been two weeks and you need to pay your employees and you don't have the extra cash sitting around, so you go to the bank and you sign a short-term note like this. So the question I'm going to ask is, how much do you need to pay back? Assuming you wait till the end of the three months. So how do we find the interest? Seven thousand times 0 0.08, as a, I put it as a decimal. Time, we said, was always in years. How do we represent three months? Three twelfths, perfect. Three twelfths. So 140 bucks, right? Does that look right? You look confused. Gotcha. So $140 interest. 
So 7,000 plus 140, you pay back $7,140. Simple interest, by the way, is how they figure out interest on most of your loans. Well, didn't I just say they only use simple interest for short term? Well, what has to happen on your loans every month? You have to make a payment, right? Yeah. So like your car loan, that's actually simple interest. They don't, they only figure out interest every time you make a payment. So let me show you something. Let's say you have, let's just say you have a $12,000 car loan. That's at 8% simple interest. Your payment, we're gonna keep this simple, it's $500 a month. So your first payment, month one, before they'll process that payment, they figure out your interest. So you're going to do your interest is going to be 12,000 times 0.08 times 112, right? Which is going to be what, $80, I think? $80 in interest. So what that means is they take the $12,000 plus $80. That's $12,080. Then they subtract your $500 payment. So that's $11,580 is your balance at the end of the first month. Second month. Now this is assuming you make your payment on the exact day it's due. And I'm making a little bit of an assumption of 30-day months rather than you know, a 31-day, 28-day. I'm just saying all months are equal and it's one twelfth of a year. For the second month, your interest is going to be on the 11,580 times 0.08 times one twelfth. Oh, that didn't work out. $77.20 will be your interest. So we're going to add that on. So now what you have is $11,657.20. Minus your $500 payment, you're at $11,157.20. Here's your balance. What's that? That's the balance at the end of the second month. Third month now, we've got to find our interest. This is going to be 11,157.20 times 0.08 times 112. 74.38. You can see the interest goes down every month as you make payments. So now you got to add the seventy-four dollars and thirty-eight cents. So you had eleven thousand two hundred thirty-one dollars and fifty-eight cents. Subtract your five hundred dollar payment equals. That's your balance at the end of three months. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to show you something that banks hate. Um, something I do with all my loans, and it drives my bank nuts. When I get like a tax refund or I get a bonus check or something, um, do construction in the summer, I get paid for a job, I'll go in and I'll make like six months worth of car payments all at once. Um, if I can, I'll actually do like a year all at once. I'm going to get my tax refund, I'll make the whole year's car payments out of the tax refund and be done. Let's just look at this just over three months here. Let's say... I went in at the beginning of the three months. 
took my twelve thousand dollars and I paid fifteen hundred three months worth of payments right that is ten thousand five hundred is my balance at the end of three months I got to charge interest now ten thousand five hundred times point oh eight times three twelfths I get interest of 210 bucks. What's that? Oh, well, try it. That works out. I may put it in a weird order, but it worked. My balance is 10,710 bucks. If I make all three payments up front compared to making them monthly, my balance is $21.58 lower. I've saved an in interest. Now that's just doing three months of the chunk. If you did six months of the chunk, um, you save even more because you make your payments all up front. It's lower balance that you're they're charging interest. The other thing that happens is they don't figure this interest in until you make your next payment. So if I only make a payment, like I make all six months worth of payments at once, they won't calculate interest until I make my next payment. So if I wait six months to make a payment, no interest gets added in until I make that next payment. So they don't compound the interest. You know, here every month they add in the interest, so then the next month they get interest on top of that interest. We're going to talk about compounding in just a little bit. I mean, I save a couple hundred bucks a year by doing that. It's not a huge deal. What's that? Because I already made I made fifteen hundred dollars in payments. Yeah, all the all up front. Yeah. So it's like I said, I'm not saying that that's what you should do or whatever, but you can see there's a difference in your payments by paying up front. A lot of banks have actually, uh, they stopped this now, so they don't let you get more than two months ahead. If you're more than two months ahead on your payments, they apply on your payments to principal, so that you can't do this. Because they, that's what they did to you? Yeah, because Mortgages, they're not allowed to have a prepayment penalty, so you can get as many months ahead on a mortgage as you want to. And it does make a huge difference. Right now, I don't think I have a mortgage payment due to October of 2017 because I paid ahead on it. But again, I figure it saves me on a mortgage. It's even bigger. It's I mean, probably eight, nine hundred dollars a year off my mortgage payment by paying it ahead. Okay. So anyway, I mentioned compound interest. Let's look at that a little bit. Compound interest, like we saw in the the car payment, the car loan example there, you add in the interest and then the next month you're going to pay interest on top of that. So let's look at something like, let's say you go back to our original example where you invest $4,000 at 6% for three years. Now you remember we had found the interest here Like this, we got what, $720 worth of interest. So $4,000 plus $720 is $4,720. But it's not very realistic. Most banks are not going to go three years without figuring in interest. So what they might say is something like 6% compounded quarterly. What does that mean? That means that quarterly, four times a year, every three months, they're going to figure out how much interest is built up and they're going to add it into the balance. Then the next quarter, that's part of the balance, so you get interest on top of that. That's why it's called the compounded. It builds upon itself. So let's see how that would work. Quarter one, our interest $4,000 times 0 0.06 times one-fourth, right? One-fourth is one quarter of a year. So that's at 60 bucks. Is there interest? So that means you add $60 to that. 
in quarter two, we start out with a balance of $4,060. And that's what we find our interest from. So our interest there will be $60.90. You can see we got an extra 90 cents in interest because of the compounding. So that means we add $60.90. That's our balance we start the third quarter with. So we figure our interest off of that. Four one twenty point nine times point oh six divided by four. Sixty one dollars and eighty one cents. So you can see each quarter the amount of interest goes up. Even though you haven't put any money into the account, the amount of interest goes up because the interest is building is adding in. So you're getting interest on top of the interest. Now, to get through three years, how many times would I have to do this? Twelve times, right? Four times a year for three years would be twelve times. I don't really want to sit here and do this twelve times. So let's look for a shortcut here. Let's look at this here. Each quarter, what percent are we really finding in interest? It's six percent times one-fourth. 0 0.015 or 1.5 percent, right? Does that make sense? Each quarter, I'm taking the 6 percent times 1 fourth. That's how much interest I'm getting. So it's really each quarter is 1.5 percent. Think of it, it, it makes sense. 6 percent divided by 4 is 6 percent in a year. If you divide it, divide it by 4 is 1.5 percent per quarter. And just like what I looked at up above, I start out with 100%. If I add in 101.5%, at the end of the quarter, I'm at 101.5%. Make sense? Just like we're doing with our other increases, you had a 20% increase, you're now at 120%. So what this means is, I could, if I wanted to find my balance at the end of the first quarter, I could just take 4,000 and multiply 101.5%, if I move my decimal to the rate, 1.015. 1.015 is 101.5%. So 4,000 times 1.015 is going to give us 460. That was our balance at the end of the first month. Then what did I do for the second month? Multiply by 1.015 again. Is going to give us 4,120.9. That was our balance at the end of the second month, or the start of the third month. Yeah, so we're, we're going to multiply by this how many times? 12 times. In math, do we have a shortcut for multiplying by the same number over and over again? Exponents. There you go. So 4,000 times 1.015 to the power of 12. We get 478247. $4,782.47. $4, Remember, when we did it with simple interest, it was $4,720. So you made an extra $62.47 in interest because of the compound. Now here for three years, that doesn't seem very significant. But let's take a look at something else. I'm just going to do a survey. Anybody in here, how many of you in here are under 25? Okay, four of you? Okay. So this will work. So you're under 25. Let's say you get out of school and you're 25 years old. Or a little bit younger, whatever. Um, Let's say you're going to try to retire at 65 years old. Right now, you cannot draw Social Security. I won't be able to draw Social Security until I'm 67 in so many months, almost 68 years old. Um, that's because they've changed it. It's not 65 anymore. Yeah. It's already changed. 
Um, there's still people that are, are retiring at 65, but it depends on what year you were born. So for the year I was born, it's like, yeah. The year I was born, it's like 67 and nine months or something like that. Well, it depends on your age. It depends on your age, yes. Exactly. If you're older, you, you're still going to be at 65. Exactly. I don't know I don't know what it all is, what ages it changes. But I know for me it's like 67 and nine months or something. Yeah, those of you that are in your 20s, by the time you get up there, it's going to be like 78 years old or something. You can retire. But I don't know what it will be, but... It used to be you could take retirement at 62. So anyway, this is 40 years here. Let's, we'll stay on top of it. Now, right now you're in school. And most of the time when you're in school, you're living a little bit cheaper. Um, maybe you're sharing an apartment with somebody, driving an older car, getting through. Um, a lot of people, as soon as they get out of school and they get that first good job, they want to buy a new truck or a new car, move into a nicer apartment or whatever. But let's say you keep living like you're in school. Maybe you're still living in your parents' basement or whatever. Or you have roommates driving your old car. Let's say you try to, you, you just keep going that way for a year or so. In the first year, how much money do you think you could save up? Tons. Tons. You think you'd have a problem doing 5000 Probably not. Probably more. The only reason I'm putting down 5000 is um, the IRS says 5000 is the limit you can put into an individual retirement account every year. You can save up more for retirement using 401ks and all sorts of other stuff. But if you just do a single payment IRA, um, you can do 5000 a year. If you have money sitting there, if you're going to invest it for 40 years, now I'm not talking about going to the bank and opening up a savings account. I'm talking about going to a professional investment advisor and having them invest it for you. The average 40-year gain is between 12 and 13 percent a year. That's even during years that, you know, even during 20, 40-year periods that contain like big losses, like 2008 when the market dropped like 30 percent, or the Great Depression back in the 19 late 1920s and 30s. Um, even then, your average 40-year gain was 12 to 13% a year. So let's be conservative. Should we just go 12% a year? Sound right? So that means at the end of each year, it's going to be 1.12, 112%. 100% 12%, right? We're going to do that for 40 years. So that's just our compound interest like we just did above. Now, don't punch this in your calculator. Just... Guess. Anybody want to guess what this is going to be? Four sixty-five, two fifty-five. That's five grand once at age twenty-five, and letting it sit there for forty years. Four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. What's that? That's if you get your 12% a year. That's in 40 years. Now let's say you wait until you're 35. You get out of college and say, darn it, I worked hard. I'm going to play with my money. I'm going to buy some new cars. I'm going to get four-wheelers, boats, whatever, snowmobiles. I'm going to have some fun for 10 years. This was starting at 25 here. Let's say you start at 35. You say, okay, I'm 35 years old now. Now I can think about that getting old stuff. Well, let's say you put away the same $5,000, and assuming you can still get 12% on it per year, which for 30 years you may not quite be able to do that. Maybe I want to guess before I hit equals? It's depressing. 149.78. Uh, 149.8. I put 40 here, that should have been 30, shouldn't it? I typed in 30 in the calculator, didn't I? Yes, I did. I just wrote down 40. 149,000, 150,000 basically. Less than a third of what you would have up here. Now, let's say you really screw up. We'll go back and do that in just a second for you. Let's say you really screw up. I'm 43, but we'll call me 45. 
Let's see how much you're 45. Can you do it? That's only going to sit there for 20 years. I'm only going to get 48,000. I get about one tenth of what you would. So at 45, you're only going to get one tenth of the return as you would at 25. That's the power of being young. Now you said, what if you're 19? Then you got 46 oh, years. Yeah, it's going to be close to a million dollars. Now I've got to show you, just, just to clear my conscience, I've got to show you this example. Age. Twelve percent is medium dot, you know, moderate risk. It's not low risk. It's definitely high risk. I mean, I've had high risk investments that brought me in, you know, twenty five to thirty five percent a year for a couple of years, but then you lose thirty percent one year. So, yeah. Since you brought up 19, we'll start at 19 for you. We'll go up to 65. So let's put away This is starting at 19, putting away $5,000 a year every year until you're 65. Anybody want to guess what this is going to be? I can let this go because it's not going to just. Oh, it does display. Wow. What's that? This is still at 12%, so this is still be going to a professional investor and having them invest it for you. And $5,000 five thousand every year. That's if you don't touch it, yeah. yeah. So that's $8 million you could have. I take it you've already started? Well, here you go. I take, I'll take off those first two years for you. Still 6.7 million. You can probably make it off that. <laughs> That's if you put in an extra 5,000 every year. Now, here's the here's the thing. Um, I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this down to 25 is where we started, right? Yep. If you did it every year starting at 25, you get 4.3 million. That's not bad, right? You could probably squeeze by, is what you're saying? Now here, let's do this. You started at 25, you put away $5,000 a year. And you do it up to 32 and you say, you know what, I'm done. Not going to put away anymore. Now I'm going to start playing. So at 33, I'm gonna, now I'm going to start buying boats, cars, snowmobiles, campers, whatever. You still have 2.6 million, 2.58 million. That's if you started at 25 and went till 32. So that's technically it's eight years. Well, let me let me finish this example. Yeah. That's that. No, that's only for from starting at 25 and going to 32. At 32, you can quit. Never put another penny in there. So if I put in, so if I start at 25, I quit. If you quit, so if I buy the end until I'm 32 years old, and then I don't have right. two million dollars when I'm 65. Yes. So now watch this. You don't have to keep putting it in. After 32, you don't have to put any more in. How about this now? Let's say that you're you're 25 and you say, you know what, I'm young, I'm gonna play. So you just blow your money, buy toys, whatever. Then you hit 32. At 33, you say, okay, you know what, time to start worrying about it. I'm gonna start putting away money. So you start at 33 and you put away 5,000 every year till you retire. Not even close. The person that put it away for that eight years from 25 to 32 is way ahead of you. 
that eight years is worth more than the next 33 years. Okay, so say if we, we start at like age 22, so we have to all be next. Okay. And we do it for just eight years there. So let's say you're going to go until you're 29. How's that sound? So you start at 22, go to 29. 3.6 million. Actually, let's, let's cut it back. Let's say you only go to your 28, only seven years. So you start at 22, go to 28. You're going to have 3.3 .3 million. Even if I did like five years, I'd still be 2 million. Oh, yeah. So now here, this the person that starts at 29 and goes on, they're not even going to catch you. So I mean, that's 35 years, 36 years, and they can't catch you for what you can do in seven. Yeah, what happens if you put like $5,000 in one and then you double it? Well, that's like we were showing you before. That's the example we were showing you before, that $5,000 oh, at 25 is like 400000 What were you asking? It's the interest change. Oh, the interest rate changes, yeah, that you'd have to recalculate. Um, but it's still, I mean, the, the effect is still the same. I mean, that first seven or eight years of your life is worth more than the next 30 to 40 years of your life. So I just, you know, since there's a lot of younger guys in here, I need to throw that out there for you. Those of you that are my age, it's depressing, but it's still never too late. Some old coworker of mine will try to get you to do this. Yeah. If you tell me about it. Start when you're young. If you put it away when you're, you know, like I said, you know, it's, it's at 22, you know, 25 even, it's nice to say, well, I'm young, I want to play, I don't have to about retirement. But look at this, you save for seven years. And then after that, at, starting at 30, 29 or 30, every penny you make you can play with. You don't have to save anything every year. You can, you can spend everything you make, and you're still better off in retirement than you would be if you played for seven or eight years than you spent the rest of your life trying to save for retirement. Well, I mean, well, we, we can't account for that. I mean, this is just, yeah, yeah. And this still applies. I mean, this still averages out over the years. I mean, you can't, you're trying to look at individual years, and you can't do that. You've got to look at what it does, averages out over a long period of time. The only place where that market crash really is going to hurt you is if you have a market crash, like, right here, a couple of years before you retire. That's why they always tell you when you get within, you know, 10 years of retirement or so, start pulling your investments out of the riskier stuff and put it in safer stuff so it doesn't, if you have that big crash, you're not going to be hurt. I mean, if you have, chances are if you have more than 10 years to retirement, if there's a big market crash, it's going to recover before you retire. But I mean, that's, I'm not going to try to give you professional investment advice. You got to go to an investment planner for that. So I'm not going to get into the details of it. But this is how the compound interest works. Yeah. That, uh, that first, they said, seven or eight years of your life is so important when you start working. Okay, so that's my, that's me getting up on my soapbox for the day. How do you feel about, like, the 401k plan? Oh, it's great because then you're, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, the big difference, um, there are, there are actually Roth 401k plans now, too. I have not looked into those to see how they'll work, they work. But for IRAs, and again, I'm not a professional investor, so I'm not going to say a whole lot here. There's IRAs and then there's Roth IRAs. So an IRA, what they do for an IRA is you actually deduct that from your income. So they call that pre-tax dollars. So you get a tax break for putting money into your retirement. So like you know, you you put in five thousand dollars, it really only costs. Let's say you're paying twenty percent in taxes, um, it only costs you like four thousand dollars because you would have paid a thousand of that in taxes anyway. The prob the problem is you got to let me finish the example, then I'll answer questions. The problem is when you go to draw it out, you got to pay taxes on it. So that five thousand dollars, if you did it at twenty five, and let's say it built up to that three or four hundred thousand dollars. When you start drawing it out, you got to pay taxes on that four hundred thousand um, dollars. As you draw it out, you don't have to pay it all at once, but as you draw it, the different the difference is is they, they figure at retirement you're probably making less or in a lower tax bracket. In the Roth IRA, you put away five thousand dollars, you pay the taxes on it now. It's just they don't deduct it from your income. It's just regular income. You've already paid the taxes on it before you put it in. When you draw it out, no tax. 
So the question is, you know, like I said, I'm assuming a 20% tax. So on this one, you save, save the money up front, no tax. Here, you pay $1,000 in tax. So that $5,000 is going to cost you basically $6,000, right? But here, there's no tax. Here, let's say that that balance grows to $400,000. 20% tax, you're going to pay $80,000 in taxes on it. So would you rather pay $1,000 now or $80,000 in 40 years? Um, compound interest-wise, it, it comes out to be the same. I'd rather pay the thousand now. That way, when I'm retiring, I don't have to worry about paying taxes on it. Okay. Um, well, again, I don't want to get into the details. An IRA, once you put money in it, you cannot draw out without penalty until you get to a certain age. You have to be 59 and a half. A Roth, you can draw out your principal. So let's say you put in the $5,000 now. In 20 years, it's grown to like $40,000. You can still draw out the first five, but you can't draw out the interest. Okay, you can't draw out the thirty-five thousand in interest. What was what you were just explaining before? What's that? Is that a 401k or like that was uh, that's just an investment. That is, that could be a four hundred one k where you haven't taken out your paycheck, or it could just be a Roth. I mean, the spreadsheet I did. Yeah, yeah that that could be either way. Um, a four hundred one k, of course, you have to have it taken out of your paycheck every month. But right, so you could just go into the bank and say, "Hey, I want." Well, you go. You actually go to your employee. You, you go to an investment planner to set up the investment. Then you go to your employer and say, okay, every month put money in here. And each employer has only has certain investments they allow you to use because your employer actually has to write a check to that company every month. So what they'll do is, so, so, so every employee doesn't go out and pick a different company. So they got, let's say you got 100 employees. They could be sending 100 checks out to different places. Right. They're going to say, okay, we're going to give you three choices. You can choose between these three companies for a 401k. So then each month, okay, they're just gonna send out a check to each of those three companies and the companies know, or then they, they send out the check and then they send out a, a document that says, okay, this is for, this is how much for this employee, this is how much for this employee and, and whatever. Okay. And obviously there's no checks anymore, it's all electronic transfers. But. So then what happens? So like the last job I had, they, they wouldn't allow people to do 401ks until they work there for six months. Yeah, that's just called being vested. They don't want to set up a 401k and then have you leave in two months. So, so if they don't offer it, then it's free? <laughs> um, some companies don't offer 401k. So then you do an IRA. You put money in on your own. And that you can you don't, that you only have to contribute once a year. You don't have to do it every month. So It's just easier to do it every month. Most IRAs have a minimum contribution. They get only 401ks. There's usually like a fifty dollar a month minimum or whatever. Most IRAs there's like a five hundred dollar a month minimum or five hundred dollar per year minimum, so you can't put in less than five hundred dollars at a time. Yep. The one restriction on um, IRAs or four hundred one k's is you cannot put away more than what you made in earned income. So if you don't have a job, if you're not having an earned income, you can't put money into an area. Yeah. But again, I'm not an investment expert, so I'm not up. But I know for like, uh, if you have kids, if, if you want to do the numbers, you go back to the numbers. Like if you have a kid who's, you, you've let's say you've saved like $6,000 for their college fund. Well, $6,000 isn't, isn't even going to pay for their first year of college. But starting at 16, you can put money into an IRA for them. But again, it's limited to how much they make. So let's say they get a part-time job and they make $2,000. You can take 2,000 of that and put it into an IRA for them. And then their next year they make $2,500. Take 2,500 of that and put it in an IRA. Well, now they're 18 years old and you've got this $6,000 put into an IRA. Well, it has that same effect. At 18, that $6,000, if you let it grow till 65, they're looking at seven or $800,000 in their retirement. So you've pretty much provided their retirement for what it would have cost for less than their first year of college. Okay, I'm gonna done.